Why, hello everyone. This is Hydro here from the Bridge Team development team. And for this video, I just want to give you a very brief overview of our GUI for Bridge Team. So first of all, when you open Bridge Team, you are greeted with this menu. This is our activation menu. So go ahead and click Check Activation and Start. And you'll be taken to this menu. Now, for the Ships menu, as we go along with our early access, more ships will be added to this menu. So currently we have the cruise ferry and the tug. And as we go along, we are not done yet. This software is not done as of the time of recording. So we plan to add even more ships and even more environments in the future. For now, we have the cruise ferry and the tug. And the environment, we have Dover and Calais. So I'm going to choose the ferry, I'm going to choose Dover, and I'm going to click Start. And this will have the simulator load into Dover with the ferry as our vessel of control. Here it is. The simulator is loaded. All right. So I'll just go by the buttons here one by one. So the main menu takes you back to the main menu that you just saw. The different GUI toggles, for example, Ectus toggles the Ectus at the bottom right. Autopilot toggles the Autopilot. The Conning toggles the Conning. Enable, disable GUI, self-explanatory. Now, Bridge Team contains a very highly realistic and advanced radar simulation. So the radar is over here, where my cursor is. You can change it to full screen. You can change the ranges, so you just have to wait until the sweep is complete. And you can turn on RT and TT. So TT stands for true trails, true motion trails. And you can see here, there is the trails. RT means relative motion. And with relative motion, it's set on permanent trails at the time of this recording. So we gave you a button over here that allows you to clear your trails. For true trails, it is locked at the time of recording at uh, 30 second trails. So these will auto clear itself. The button over here puts this radar into standby. Now, as you can see in standby, if I pan over to the radar, you can see that the radars are not turning. The antennas are still. If I click transmit, you can see that the radar starts transmitting and starts turning on the external model. All right. Now, for these buttons down here, just below, the pause button pauses the simulation, the play button plays the simulation, and this button here is the time compression feature. So notice here it says X1. This means the simulator is running at times one speed. If I click this once, it goes X2, means the simulator is operating at two times the speed of normal time. I click it again, and it takes me to four times. Now this is the mode, this is the time mode that I recommend most of you are on. We do have times 8 and times 10, and uh, as I'll demonstrate here, I click it again and it says times 8. And I click it again and it says times 10. Now, just a fair bit of warning, without a powerful processor, a CPU that's powerful enough, you will not be able to use times 8 or times 10. You will only be able to use 1, 2, and 4 for mid-range CPUs. High-range CPUs will be able to use times 8 and times 10. You will know if you are not capable of running times 8 or times 10 by two factors. Either the ship launches into the air because of the physics system, which means your CPU is simply not powerful enough to run the time compression. Or the second is that our protection kicks in before your ship launches into the air, we've built protection to prevent that from happening. And the, prevent, the protection will essentially just set your, your time compression speed back to times one. 
so either of the two cases, then you'll know that your CPU is simply not powerful enough to run times 8 or times 10. The play button, if you're on time compression, will take it back to times 1. Now, orbit cam is the camera that you see here orbiting the ship. Bridge cam gives you a bridge walkthrough. And by right clicking, I can pan around or I can press the keyboard Q and E to turn my head. To walk is W S A D. If I hold down W first and then I hold down shift, I walk faster. As in I'm running. Hold down W, hold down shift, and you'll see that speed difference. On the bridge, you will be able to manipulate these controls. For example, the wheel, you can click, left click, and drag it. And as you can see, the slider also manipulates it. The slider does snap, so you will always know where center is. Same as the bow thrusters and the throttle. Now, the throttle, actually, the throttle is pretty interesting. So, on ships with multiple engines, for example, this ship has two engines, you will see two throttles. This button over here says linked, which means if I increase the throttle, if I increase one handle, the other one moves along with it. If I click this button, I can now have full control over the individual engines. So not linked and linked. And our ship's already beginning to move. If I go to the bridge cam again, just very uh, briefly, if I hit the L key on my keyboard, I can toggle between lights and no lights. And this is helpful if you're at night and you need to see something. If I hit the I key on my keyboard, this brings up the weather selector. I can select, for example, little clouds, or I can go light clouds. And as you can see outside, it reflects that, changes. I can set the time of day. And I can select the wave force. So for example, if I'm at night and it's very dark, I go to the bridge, it's dark. I can turn on the lights, on and off, hitting the L key. And as you can see the time here, it's all real time changes. All right, well, with that said, I'll keep this video nice and short. Hope you like what you just saw and hope this video gives you a bit more information on how to use our controls. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us uh, on Discord, on our forums, or our support channels. All right, thanks everyone. Have a very pleasant day.